What is going on, everyone? Welcome to the Star Wars Exchange podcast. Uh, my name is Parks. I'm here with my co-host, Ari. Good day, mate. And today we are joined by a very special guest, the one and only uh, account manager of the Instagram account, No Star Wars, Mike. What's going on, everyone from Chicago? Oh God, no, that is that is terrible. <laughs> no. That was horrendous. Let's get things back in order around yeah, let's here. Fix, <laughs> let's fix this up. <laughs> No, I mean, guys, we're recording this on April Fool's. Well, it's April Fool's for me. It's it's March 31st for these two, but uh, yes. nah, it's basically a bit of fun. But of course, we are here with our good friend Parks. Um, you've been on the show before. How are you going today? Uh, I'm doing great. Um, yeah, no, I'm doing really good. Um, doing doing great. I'm sorry. Little, little <laughs> run. Yeah, no, I'm good. I'm glad to be back here. You guys are wonderful. You, are, you know that I think you're wonderful. Um, oh, yeah. I'm sure... We're going to have fun today. Yes, yeah, we are. Not, we think you're wonderful. Yes, and <laughs> Book of Boba Fett Episode 8, really good. Like, I can't yes. wait to talk about it. Yeah. They, you know, I didn't think intrigue. they'd bring it back. I didn't think they'd fix the Shonen episode, but they did. Pretty amazing. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. Oh, well, yeah. We haven't seen you since that that live stream we did back in the day. If you haven't watched that, go check it out. Um, good Boba Fett discussions. But, Mike, how are you today? I'm feeling good because uh, Parks and I are usually agree on a lot of things. And in that finale, he was my defender when it was you and me going to, you know, you fighting about, you know, the action and you complaining about this and that. It was me and Parks holding up the ground. It was, it was I should say, me and Mando here. I was yeah, yeah. but we were, yeah, we yeah. were carrying the high ground and stuff so it's it's in nice the name of honor united you know in the name of honor of course. hey man yeah. if that makes me cad bane i'll take it any day <laughs> sure um, well you're, you're dead yeah. then in that case yeah you're dead <laughs> i guess oh no did you not see the blinking light though oh that's the true blinker. that's true there's a chance <laughs> yeah i have hope <laughs> anyway though um we're, we're here today just to talk to parks about arto and and what it is because um well i guess everyone should know if you haven't checked out arto you must do so um i was first introduced i think by our friend uh noah uh the star warrior who's been on this podcast mm. before he was posting about it on his story about all these um little like documentary videos on clone wars rebels fallen order recently bad batch um <clears throat> and yeah i thought uh i should check these out they were in my watch later for, for a while and then finally i was on a road trip i'm like you know i'm gonna throw this on 10 minutes in oh my god the man sitting but <laughs> under me right now parks he makes some unreal content, so <clears throat> we're here to talk to him about it. So, yeah, let's uh, let's just start off by asking. Obviously, this is a Star Wars podcast, so I want to hear first about what's what's your story with Star Wars, what's your origin, and you know how'd you get introduced. Just tell us all about it. Yeah, um, I believe I, I probably said a little bit of this when I first came on here, but uh, just just in short, because it's such a great, I think it's a great little thing to tell people. Uh, my first like what I would consider my first like concrete exposure to Star Wars. I was seven. Um, my I was flipping through the channels. I'd usually hang out with my like my dad when we're watching TV on like a Saturday afternoon. Uh, flipping through the channels, we landed on Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace on Spike uh, TV. Back then, they did a lot of Star Wars marathons, uh, which was uh, a very nostalgic thing. You know, just have that on in the background, and I'd be playing with like Legos or whatever. But this was my first like concrete exposure where I was like old enough to like grab onto what I was seeing. Um, and uh, I, I remember like it, w it was during the Battle of Naboo when it started, like when when we were watching it, um, which, ha you know, had resembled nothing at all of what I had heard about Star Wars. And then it got to the bit where Darth Maul walks out of like the doors. And I was like, whoa, dad, who is that? And he looked at me dead in the eye and said, that's Darth Vader. Uh, and so <laughs> took me like, I'd say about a month of like watching all the films to be like, that's not Darth Vader. So, <laughs> um, I come from a very confused place with star Wars. No, generally not, but, um, yeah, so that's kind of how it started. <laughs> and I, I'd say like, yeah, I, I kind of watch the, the films like semi often, like just through like, uh, TV and whatnot. Um, you know, throughout, I guess that was grade school at the time. And then. I'd say sometime mid 2008, I started seeing trailers for uh, the Clone Wars, like the animated movie. And it was so weird because I was like, you know, 
I know this is Star Wars, but this is, does not look like Star Wars. And then I saw the Clone Wars thing pop up and I was like, I have to know more about this. Saw that in theaters, saw it on TV every week. Same here, Mike. Um, and I'd <laughs> say I feel left out. Well, I need yeah, a Clone sorry. Wars ASAP. It's all right. You could tell us about how, you know, sorry, I won't, I won't, I won't, I won't. <laughs> we, we, we won't that. <laughs> For, for the oh. listeners, for the for our audio listeners, me and Parks are wearing Clone Wars attire, and Ari's yes. just looking like one of the, um, you know, I'll be nice. Sorry, Parks, continue. <laughs> <laughs> we're, 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 we're firing blanks at Ari tonight. Um, oh, God. <laughs> no, but I, I'd say, like, you know, the movies got me into Star Wars, but what really made me, like, a fan to the point that I am still a fan today was the Clone Wars. Um, yeah. So that's everything you need to know about me as a star wars fan really comes from you know growing up with the clone yeah. wars and um you know since then like i've come to love pretty much just just about everything in star wars i can't really say there's anything that i'm like against even like the sequels you know like i've enjoyed all of them you know um so uh and I'm enjoying everything that's coming out now so yeah yeah awesome. i love that you had it here first. i love that I love that because I had similar, uh, similar, uh, yeah, breaking Twitter. Uh, Parks Artor, also known as Artor, loves the sequels, appreciates them. Uh, it's funny because I had the same kind of upbringing where I would kind of watch them on Spike and then got into oh, yeah. Clone Wars. But, you know, I had the opposite uh, of you. I didn't I didn't confuse Vader and Maul. I thought Ahsoka was supposed to be Padme. I thought, oh man, Leia. it was <laughs> it was really bad. That's a whole I, no. other level of. Confusion. Wait, no. I thought I thought Job of the Hut was Ezra. It was <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> you We've know. all been there. We've all been there. We've all been there. So, no, no. Is I, that I, not I totally Jabba sitting to. next to you right now? I think it is. That's 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 Jabba, and that's yeah. that's Rex right there. Yeah. Rex. I feel okay. like you're the weatherman right now, pointing around, just being like, wait, <laughs> clear that that look over here. You have <laughs> you have the goat. <laughs> <laughs> man audio listeners you better jump over to youtube yeah you're, you're missing out you're this missing episode out. Yeah. you're missing out you're missing out <laughs> oh, um yeah but what, what were you saying mike about yeah you you got so confused for oh yeah Padme. Or, or padme or one of them I, I thought anakin was supposed to be luke because i heard the name skywalker so i mean i, I just i love clone wars because and i've talked about it many times on the show and it's really just overall just made me a star wars fan and connected me so like um where, so where would ari and i had this discussion uh like a couple weeks ago or maybe even it was last week but where does your heart reside in star wars is it with the movies or with the animation um i mean it, it has to be the animation you know i i don't like you know star wars is firmly rooted in like that live act like you can't have the animation without live action. You know, all the aesthetics that carry over and work well in animation work well because of live action. At the same time, though, um, the animated medium of Star Wars, like, lends itself to truly imagining the sort of scope and scale of Star Wars that you kind of get hints of watching the films, where you watch, like, you know, the original trilogy um, and you, you hear mention of like the Kessel run and you hear of the, the huts and, you know, this system, that system, uh, you get a sense of sort of the order of things working in the, the galaxy and the universe. And, um, you know, like, of course, by the time you get to the prequels, the sequels, pretty much any Star Wars project now, like, you know, there's really no limits to what you can put on the screen, but there's something wonderful about animation in that, like, you know, you can the limits is what you can draw limits is what you can you know render um and so that i feel like and especially in a show like the clone wars to a slightly lesser extent but still uh very impressive all through the board and only to a lesser extent because it is inherently like a smaller scale show the rebels um you can you can see like them doing just a vast array of things that you can't even really do and like hasn't really been quite done in, in some of the live action stuff. Um, like I've been rewatching the Mandalorian lately and, and just, um, you know, season two, like every, every episode takes place on a different planet and it's pretty amazing. Like there is a sense of place to everything. Um, but you know, there's still like a groundedness to it that, uh, you, you get in the animation, of course, you know, cause they want it to feel grounded. They want it to feel like this is a place you can be, but also once again, you can imagine 
or to Plutonia. You can imagine Christophsis. You can imagine Florum, Vancor. I'm a, I'm, I'm a huge Star Wars geek, in case you can't tell. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, so, you know, I'd say, yeah, that. And also, like, there have been many times, there are many moments in animation that, like, just in, are just going to stick with me like forever. Like Ahsoka leaving yeah. the Jedi Temple, mm. um, Ezra's sacrifice at the end of Rebels is one that like when I first watched that for the first time, which was early last year actually, that like that destroyed me. I was like <laughs> so beautifully just sacrificed, <laughs> and of course Kanan sacrificed too. Yeah, um, yeah. But um, you know like and you know everything Siege of Mandalore. So I'd say like maybe maybe just 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 by proxy of like how much of it has been made and how great all of it is animation and live action could eventually get to that point. Um, but also it's, you know, at this point it's like, that's, that's just where I, I feel like Star Wars is for me, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, definitely, definitely interesting to hear. And yeah, so that's sort of, you know, your Star Wars history, you know? Yeah. We, we know you love the animation. You're, you're, you're a big Star Wars fan. We can all see, but tell us about your channel, you know, our tour. Cause Yes. It's fascinating to me, uh, you know, me and Mike, obviously both big fans of what you do. Tell us about how that all came to be and then, you know, what it's been like really because, you know, you dropped, uh, you know, three this three-part Clone Wars documentary series and then those videos just absolutely took off. But what's it all been like? Just tell us. Well, um, I'll say I can I couldn't have started our tour if it weren't for a YouTube channel that I started over 10 years ago now, actually, I was in middle school when I made it, um, called SciTour, uh, which is still, still up on the internet, still up on YouTube. I, I did, uh, like gameplay videos, walkthrough videos, let's play videos. So it's, it was a, a video gaming channel. Um, all the videos are still up. Don't, don't look at any of them. I made most of them when I was in high school. Um, but still like, um, you know, so it's I went good. through all of that and, you know, I'd, I'd play a lot of Star Wars games. I'd play like Force Unleashed. Uh, I played the Lego Star Wars games. Um, I played KOTOR, but I also played like Assassin's Creed and Borderlands and um, uh, Batman Arkham Knight and um, uh, the Witcher games. And so um, for me, like, you know, a lot of what I love about Star Wars sort of brought me to video games, not just because of the Star Wars games, but because of like the, the potential of exploring like sci-fi universes, fantasy universes. And then at some point just experiencing really good stories. Mm -hmm. um, but as I grew up, you know, I was kind of like, you know, going through high school, going out of high school, um, you know, I was probably like, and, and to, for the record, like that channel was never massive. Uh, the most subscribers I've had, I think was like a bit over 5,000, which is not bad. You know, I, I, you know, it's impressive. If you were running that in high school, wow. right? <laughs> no. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no. So like, and at, but at some point, like the amount of subscribers I had versus the views I was getting just, you know, there was a huge disparity and I'd upload a new video and it'd get like 12 views. And for, for like, I was like, man, like, I don't know. I'm just not engaging with my audience anymore. And that was discouraging over time. And then as well, like, you know, it became something where I felt like I was maybe growing away from like the sort of love that I had for it in the same way you might outgrow something that you enjoyed as a kid. Yeah. And, um, just, you know, so I went, th I went away from a lot of it. I came back to it a couple times. I tried to do different sort of like discussion videos. I tried to do reviews of certain video games. I would try to um, do like critiques of certain video games. Once in a while, I do sort of like a, a music video style edit of a video game, kind of like what you'd see on TikTok nowadays. Um, he started TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, sorry guys. Um, <laughs> sorry no, no, guys. But, uh, no, well, yeah, and I mean that was a big thing too. Like at the time with that era of YouTube, especially when Clone Wars was on there, you'd see like uh, I guess they're called AMVs, where people would you know they'd take like a Linkin Park song and they'd have like Captain Rex doing cool stuff to the background of it. Oh my gosh, <laughs> um, that takes me back. Does it? Yeah, dude. Um, yeah. And I, I, you know, I, I actually have a couple of those from the Clone Wars, and they're up. Uh, they're hard to find, but. Um, I made. So you know, we're gonna find them. I'll, I'll send them to you. They're still. They're cool. Um, <laughs> yeah, do so. I, but no, I. Uh, you know, I made those when the show was on the air, which is just so surreal to think about. Like that's wow. that's. I still have a direct touchstone now to that, which is just right. insane. Yeah. But um, yeah. So you know, and then going through college, like that was like, all right, I need to like start focusing on like an actual career. Like I want to pursue film. I want to get into all this stuff. Um, at the time. Uh, just because it was one of my, you know, sort of my uh, semester assignments for 
college was to make a short film. So when I went home for the semester, I made a short film with all my friends called Bread, um, which is on another one of my YouTube channels um, called Purpose Beat. You can watch it. It's a 10 minute film about um, imagine imagine the Batman, but uh, everything is food. Uh, huh. so it's, a, it's a noir, but um, and the main character talks in a weird voice, but everything is just the characters have food names. Uh, all the props are food. Um, just everything's food. They have food puns. Uh, <laughs> bananas are the guns. It's, yeah, my pride and joy. Uh, but that really brought me back into like, oh man, this is something I enjoy. Like, here's an outlet for me to express myself again. And so we did another one of the short films the following summer. I wasn't making a, a, a great deal of YouTube videos at this time either. You know, maybe like once a month or so. Um we made another one that was even longer and we finished filming right as everyone was going back to college. Um, and I was taking a, a gap semester at the time cause I was transferring schools and I was like, ah, man, like I, I so enjoyed that. And like, I was writing almost the whole time during that, you know, the process of making that our second movie, which was called toast. Um, and toast? Uh, it was or called toast? toast, toast, toast. Okay. So you got okay. bread, you got toast. <laughs> toast. Um, right. Right. Toes. <laughs> what do you put in the toaster box? What do you put in a toaster? What do I put in it? Bre bread? Good. What do you? It's a trick question. Some people say toast. No, of course not. No, you well, expect me? <laughs> Come on. I mean, I one. fell for it as a, as a young, and I would say, oh, toast. Well, you oh, tried. I did try. My, I tried. Speaking speaking of noir uh, parks, could you yell at Ari? He hasn't seen the Batman yet. You haven't seen the Batman yet? No, I haven't. I I want to see it, but it's like. You're telling me I need to go to the theater I'm, and sit down for three hours and watch. I'm about to make a really podcast with Mike about yeah. the Batman, and it's, it's going to yes. get more views than this one. I'm <laughs> not going to be on it. <laughs> sorry, 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 Ari. Know. I feel bad. I feel like but, I've been directing stuff at you for uh, no reason. I'm sorry. We love um, Ari. No, it's I bad. love you. Anyway, um, where was I? Oh yeah. So I was like, man, like yeah. I miss doing that. So I kind of like, you know, I, I daydream at, at work about like you know it'd be cool to like you know making short films is hard because you need actors but like it'd be cool to like you know i need something where i can like write more often and mm -hmm. and you know try to like talk about things in the way that like making these films that i've made these short films that i've made has made me feel and so uh one way or another i i was like you know it's like kind of landed on a couple ideas for uh like a new type of video that I never done before, uh, where it wasn't quite a review, wasn't quite a critique. Um, it wasn't quite like anything close to the music video stuff I did. It wasn't, it wasn't a gameplay video. It wasn't a commentary. It would have to be scripted. And more than anything else, it was about like trying to create an experience for the viewer. Um, and I would do it by talking about some of my favorite sort of pieces of media that I've always wanted to sort of talk about, but never been able to like fully express how I felt about those things. Um, you know, because as much as I've enjoyed playing through uh, Jedi Fallen Order, you know, for instance, um, like recording a playthrough of that did not would not have like fully conveyed how I felt about it and what that game meant to me. You know, mm -hmm. I had to get more out of it. And so part of getting more out of that was making these videos. I took the name Saitor. I was like, what do I call this new channel? Um, I just knocked off the first few letters and called it Artor. I think I explained this to you guys before. Yeah. Um, it's it, the, the, the name for anyone who's curious, like it, it's, you have the word art in there, which is what I want to talk about. Um, it sounds similar to, uh, like Arthur, like King Arthur. Um, you got R2D2, you could potentially fit in there. Um, it, it's almost sounds like auteur, you know, which is a relevant term for film, film terminology. And, Jeez. um, it's, it's got like sounds... a quadruple meaning. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's, that's amazing. And, and if you break up the sort of the, the vowels, it's art tour. So I'm taking on a tour through art. Oh so, my gosh. That so, is... wow. Gee, yeah. Weird. So, um, did you think I... of all this when you made the name or has this just like come to you? Oh, at the time you're like, well, oh, it also does this. Oh, this it's, is it's, name. it's like a. Uh, chicken before the egg type of thing where it's like, right. you know, the name jumped ahead. I thought it sounded cool. And the more I thought about it, the more I was like, it does, it ticked all those boxes that yeah, I was right. like, oh yeah, I guess that works. That it, it, it kind of fits into all those things. But yeah. And so yeah. It, I kind of just went from there, started with the, the Borderlands games, which, you know, was really where it came from because Borderlands three was announced earlier that year. This is 2019. Um, and I was so excited about the new game that I was like, 
And Borderlands 2 is one of my favorite like video games ever. I have to talk about this in some capacity, but like I'm not gonna do this justice unless I like really try to make it special. And so that's what I tried to do with those first few videos. Hook up, you know, one couple of months later, Clone Wars was coming out. I did the same thing there with those videos, and that's kind of uh where I really became the sort of uh, identity that you know now in our tour. So yeah, there yeah. you go. The history well, of my channel. That, well, that's awesome. Didn't expect uh, where that journey uh, specifically. I just, <laughs> yeah, because I think we have actually talked about this, but we talked about this really on Twitter, yeah. but you were, so I remember you shouted out your, your um, side tour account on, yes. on Twitter. And I'm like, that just rung so many bells for me. Not the oh, tour, right. but it was the side tour. Yes. So question. Yes. Did you do so you did did you do Daredevil reviews at any at any point? So remember, there was yeah. I'll give you the exact sort of specific answer to this. So um I at some point made a separate channel called, I believe, Sator the Critic, where oh, I wanted yes. to review um movies and shows that i was like i can't do this on my video game channel you know because it's video games i'm gonna just make a separate channel for this and i did a daredevil review it was one of the first videos i did where i dressed up as daredevil like not like in the the whole horns and everything but like you know the very uh low maintenance of sort of so badly it, you can't you can't see anything because it's like in the in the dark and you can tell oh, i'm wearing it but you can't you can see my web. silhouette um, yeah, I, I set up a camera in like my uh, my parents' uh, kitchen and just just walk towards the camera menacingly. Um, yep. And yeah, I, I did like a little review, like a ten minute review or something of season one. Um, yeah, I, I did that at some point. That... I only I only ever made like three or so videos on that channel, and then I I gave up on it. That so. is so awesome because I remember watching that series back when it debuted on Netflix. Yes. And being like, this series is so good. Like, I need I need to watch reviews on it. I need to watch discussions. Because I would watch, we were talking about earlier about, like, Collider and stuff. When we would watch yeah. that, I would go to their channel, watch some stuff. But I'm like, I need more stuff to do it for me. So then I remember going, searching up. And I remember, you know, I found this, someone that was, like, around my age doing that bit. Yeah. And doing this, like, artful scene where I was like, Wow, way to way to draw on the viewer because I was like, it's like if I'm watching the show right now. I remember you doing that, and you had like the black the black cow around your face and everything. Yeah, I remember I had a. Uh, it was like what I I just took like sort of the um, like the workout shirt I would wear it to like track and field and just tied it around my face and I was like I'm daredevil. <laughs> it was uh. it was it was beautiful, guys. Seriously, oh Parks, y'all already know this, but Parks is very talented and very creative, as you saw earlier in the episode the bit that we did that was park's idea he came in here and was like i had an idea and we heard him and we did that was <laughs> all the park's the innovator we love it I, park's yeah. the innovator so that is crazy to me so i thought ari over here was like your fan first no i was your fan first if you think about the timeline yes because i remember you had that gaming channel i remember going over to that and being like i, I kind of like this dude let me continue what you know other things he has to do and i remember keeping up with some of the games there um that you did so yeah. obviously I lost touch with you um, when you went over to our tour, but that is just insane to me how that just like sure. when, when I found that out on Twitter, I was like, well, I was always wondering where that channel went to the, the, the critic one. I mean, or what, you know, where it was like, it was just a lost memory for me. And the fact that it was you, all this, Oh, that is, that's amazing. I was in disbelief when you had that epiphany. <laughs> Cause I, I, very strongly feel like i'm at least definitely mentioned the name Saitor before like either on the podcast or like when i was just talking to you guys separately like so but you know i and what was she i talking is. about oh i was like the tweet was this new Swator expansion is so confusing i'm gonna make the first Saitor video in a year to talk about it yeah 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 um, which i did not do but yeah he didn't yeah. Know, but it's all right <laughs> he's got he's got enough on his play i think yeah <laughs> yeah well I mean, speaking of like, you know, the videos, Michael saying, you know, you're very creative and all that, um, you know, we feel so what's it actually like to make one of these videos? Because, you know, I think you've mentioned at the end of one of those, you were thanking a friend of yours that edits them because that in itself, I was like, they are so well edited because the first time I watched them, I didn't actually watch, I was listening to them at work. Yeah. Um, but then I actually went and watched them again because I was like, like the visuals on it are actually so good anyway though but oh, yeah. I, i'm more interested as well about um the actual writing do you write out like a full script for these videos and 
if so, do you just have like, you know, 20 page scripts and like, how do, how do you manifest that? Do you just go rewatch the whole series? Like, you know, don't, you don't have to tell us your whole process, but like, no, I you mean, know, whatever you no, can tell say, us. We, <laughs> yeah. Well, well we, we, don't, we don't want your secrets getting leaked out. <laughs> no, it's fine. I mean, you know, the way I see it, like, you know, if, if people are able to learn from my process, like maybe they can either use it to make cool videos of their own or yeah. improve upon it. And either way, yeah. like everyone wins. Um, you know, but what a good man, what a good citizen. I mean, that's what I tell myself because for sure there's a part of me that's like like they can't know that I I write my scripts in Google Docs, like <laughs> it'll ruin everything. Why is <laughs> why is that such a thing? I feel the exact same way. I feel oh my gosh, yeah. But and you know, that's just like that's just like a naturally competitive part of my brain. But yeah. ultimately, like all I believe all boats float together. So um, yeah. so what I'll tell you is this. Um, so I have a list of like things that I want to talk about at some point. And even when I don't have a list, like it's very easy for me to know, like I want to make a video about that. Like for instance, like, um, you know, uh, when I saw uh, Mandalorian, like a few years ago, I was like, this is my show. I'm going to make a video about this at some point. Still haven't done it, but yeah, it's on the way. Um, you heard it here first. Well, not <laughs> first. I, I mentioned it before, but yeah. Um, no, so, you know, that's something where I'm like, oh, man, I want to make a video about that. Uh, and, you know, that's on a list. Like, that's that's on something that I want to talk about. So, um, from there, like, I, I sort of, at the start of the year, I sort of, like, figure, like, okay. I mean, this is how it's been the last two years. It wasn't so much like this in 2020. 2020 was more like, I'm just making videos by the, sort of by the seat of my pants. Like, let me just make this ne thing next. But yeah. since last year and this year, it's it's become, like, a strategic process of, like, okay. You know, I know a Star Wars thing comes out here. Let me try to make a Star Wars thing for mm -hmm. that, you know, or I know like, um, for instance, like the new Indiana Jones movie has finished filming. I don't know when a trailer will come out, but if I had to guess, it'd be here. So let me try to time a video for that. Um, so when it gets into the writing, then I start off by sort of making an outline, which is basically just like, okay, right now in my head, this is what I think I want the video to be. I don't have to know exactly what the video is going to be. Just have like sort of a, a vague feeling. Um, and that's really what it starts with is like being emotionally receptive to the things I'm watching, like to the movie, the show, the video game, and allowing myself to like, uh, you know, uh, connect with that experience and allow myself to sort of latch on to things that have made me feel a certain way and have maybe moved me have maybe, maybe even made me cry, you know, which was the case with mm -hmm. Rebels a few times. And so when I'm going to the outline, I'm thinking about those things. And I'm thinking about like, man, like I want to communicate that experience in a way that, um, you know, is honoring the, 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 the storytellers, but also um, relaying sort of the other end of that, which is my experience, the audience experience, hopefully, try to navigate sort of the connection between the two, you know, what were the career's intentions versus how it came across, um, you know, that kind of thing. And, you know, just try to make something that is reflective of how something has made me feel. Um, so I'll sit down, make an outline, try to outline like, you know, a uh, bullet point, maybe like I'll have this chapter, this chapter, I'll talk about this stuff here, this stuff here my ultimate goal is to leave the viewer feeling like this or, or to do this. Um, and then from there, you know, I'll do what I call a research period, which excuse me, um, could include, you know, research is, you know, it, it's what you picture. Like I'm on, I'm on my computer, just Googling stuff and trying to look up stuff, watching video interviews, uh, reading books has been the case for a couple of my videos lately, especially with uh, the Mass Effect videos. A lot of that has, a lot of the information from that has come from um, a couple different, like sort of, um, <clears throat> like sort of coffee table sort of books about Bioware. Um, but also, like the research includes rewatching that show I'm talking about, replaying that game I'm talking about. I'll take notes on it, uh, which is not something I did when I made the Clone Wars videos. Um, but since then, like pretty much from like the last video onward, I've taken notes for almost every single thing I've done rebels. I took notes for the entire show. Um, and those notes like will either be direct things that I bring up in the video or they'll make their way. Like, uh, they'll help me flesh out the outline better. 
once I, so I'll go back, I'll do another outline. It's more fleshed out. From there, I hit the script. And that is the hardest part of making any video so far is getting through the script because, you know, that that's where it's like, okay, I'm finally translating all the feelings I got up here onto the page. And it can be a battle. Um, you know, one of my longest videos on the channel took me two weeks to write. Uh, another one of my longest videos on the channel took me two months to write. Uh, and they're both comparable length and very variable time. So, um, Jeez. and, and for the record, like it doesn't, you know, flow out of me or anything like it is, it is hard work and hard focus. And, you know, invariably, like I end up sitting there staring at the page for like a few minutes or even just I'll reread, you know, cause when I'm typing, like I'm reading my stuff out loud just to make sure it sounds good because ultimately like this is i'm gonna read this at yeah some yeah because that's how it's gonna be yeah exactly Makes so sense. i'm making sure it sounds good and then if i'm not sure where to continue from there i'll read it a few times and then i'll open twitter because i'm just like <laughs> so lost um and at that point i'm like no i throw my phone across the room and try to focus yeah. and it's really hard. <laughs> uh um, i can relate so much to that. i think everyone yeah. can <laughs> doing yeah. their own work or whatever absolutely it is. Yeah. yeah for sure yeah. And Twitter is um, definitely the place for creativity. Well, <laughs> I don't know about. I do not know about that. Uh, well, yeah. No, so. it's the reason you throw your phone, of course. But yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. There's there comes a point where I'm scrolling. I'm like, what am I doing? And I, you know, I'm like, I get back to work. But yeah, yeah so it, it takes me a bit to work through. And the whole time, I'm trying to stay true to what I'm feeling. You know, I'll write something down that sounds right, but I, I, I trust my instincts enough by now and know my instincts enough as a writer that when I write, when I write something down, if it is conveying what I want to feel or not. And a lot of the times it doesn't, and I'm like erasing it, rewriting it, erasing it, rewriting. So, so writing can be a very painstaking process for me, but of course, sometimes it has gone fairly smoothly. And I'll say the video I'm working on right now, thankfully has been uh, pretty smooth, which is the exact opposite of the last video I made mass effect Two. that writing that video was very difficult. Um, but can I yeah, just so, say really quickly on that yes. video, I don't, I don't know what Mass Effect is until you made a video on it. But I, you know, I went on there because, you know, of course, we got to support our guy here. But yes. I ended up watching like 10 minutes of it. And I was like, like far out. So I was about to swear. For a yeah. yeah. But I was like far out. These videos are so good. Like the, the writing is insane. Like just if you, you just listen to it, it's great. Right. You know, add plus everything you're doing with the editing. Like, and and I didn't, I didn't even know what the thing is. But everything you were saying, I was just like. Man, you know, I, I don't know what this is, but that sounds right. Like, <laughs> right, it's, that, that just right. probably is what it is. Yeah, because, yeah, I, right. you know, I know you're always it's, on the money with the stuff I do know about. So I'm like, it's the best oh, history lesson for sure. The production is just insane on them. And you know, thank you. The scripts are fantastic. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, so I'll, you know, I'll write it. Eventually I get to the end um, and that's a huge relief. And from there, I'm like, okay, this video is going to happen. Um, the hardest part of any script is like, around the middle because that's like it's it's literally like the tension between you know what i've written so far and what i have yet to write and there's always a moment of like do i like where the script is at right now and uh there's been many instances in the past i'd say with like every script last year except the bad batch one there was a moment where i got into the middle and i was like this is garbage i need to like go back rewrite a lot of this like rearrange some points the Rebels video was very hard to write, surprisingly, you know, because it's like, I feel for the most part, a pretty straightforward show compared to like the Clone Wars. But there was such a specificity in which I wanted to like talk about certain things that I was like, ah, man, this is not, it's not, I'm not satisfied. Yeah. Um, and so I'll go back through and then maybe work my way back to the middle. And then after that, if I can get through the second, at some point it becomes a downhill sort of uh, thing. But yeah, and then... That's the first draft. I'll do a second draft where, you know, I'm aware of certain things that maybe I wanted to change. So that's the time to do it. Third draft is where I'm like, I'm sitting there. I'm reading the whole thing from start to finish out loud, changing a lot of stuff to make sure it sounds good. Then I record it. Then I edit it. And then you watch it. So, yes. yeah. And, uh, and the editing, can you talk on that? Because I think at one point you said, you know, you had a mate doing it for you or something. Uh, I don't know where you heard that, but, um, I'm just tripping. That's okay. That's all right. No, I do. <laughs> so all you do editing. it all yourself. Yes. The, all yeah, the right. writing, all the editing myself. And I should also oh say like, God. I've only had 
a friend look at my script before I recorded it once, and that was the Bad Batch video, mainly because I asked my friend who who graduated from uh, college in poli sci, um, political science, to to make sure like all of the sort of historical comparisons and sort of sentiments that right. I was making were were valid, were correct. I wasn't skewing anything. He caught a couple things that thankfully he corrected uh, or, or yeah. allowed me to correct. Um, but otherwise, that part's pretty yeah. like I'm writing. The you know, I think myself. I know what it was. I think at the end of one of the Clone Wars ones, you were saying like that you've rewatched the series with a friend or something like that. Correct. Was yes. that that? Yeah, that's where I heard it. Because I was yeah. like, you definitely said something at the end. Of, yeah. Anyway, what, that's what I want to know is how much, how like how many cups of coffee during this process you go through? Because or at least energy <laughs> drinks or something. Zero, zero. Not you a coffee here, drink. Folks. I don't Thanks, drink dude. coffee. I don't man. drink energy drinks. Um, in fact, I'd Good say man. one of my one of my coworkers like like you know i i work a job where i'm stocking stuff and he's like you believe in like that natural energy stuff i don't i'm like i'm gonna stay silent <laughs> but <laughs> i mean i got through high school and college without ever drinking any coffee or energy drinks and so at this wow. point and i've pulled many all-nighters i pulled all-nighters to finish videos before um Man, like when you see when you see when i've i've done it a few times i did it with the mass effect 2 video and i did it with the rebels video last year when when there's an update on my channel page that says i'm pushing the video back a day or two know that i have just attempted an all-nighter and i failed <laughs> and was like i can't i gotta oh, i won't have enough time i gotta push this insane. back and wow. may have to do another all nighter, but which is not Dude. healthy and it's a habit I'm trying to break. But like credit um, to your work ethic, though, because that right. you know that's just on a whole other level. So yeah, I, because I, I do once... remember with with the Mass Effect ones, yeah, it was getting pushed back a, a day or two. But I just thought, oh, I don't know, random yeah. went wrong or something. But right, right. I, now I know. <laughs> that I do not ever, ever, ever recommend this. Nor am I bragging about this. This is just perspective, like for everyone, for my fellow creators out there who might go, I've been there, or maybe not. My cyberpunk video last year, I pulled an all-nighter to finish that. And then as soon as it was rendering and uploading, I went straight into work for an eight-hour shift on no sleep, <laughs> on my feet all day. Oh and that God. was like, pfft, yeah. And then around like noon, I'm like checking comments, making sure the video is good. And yeah, I'm. I, it's not healthy. I need to be better at that. But, you know, this is an intervention. So we're. this is out. a, yeah. <laughs> no, Ari, Ari, I mean, you know, because of our Ari records in Australia, I record in Chicago. So oh, we yeah. have some type of time difference. Ari, how many times have I stood awake just to yeah. do like the thumbnail, work on the Instagram <laughs> promo posts? And Mike, yeah. Mike deserves like a lot of credit for some of the stuff he does because Dang. we start like pretty early in the morning for me. So if we do like a big like, you know, recording session or like, you know, editing, meeting, whatever it is, I like am still in bed by like midnight. But Mike, yeah, sometimes has let's just say we've had so he's had a few you know similar experiences so credit what, credit to you yeah. too because i could just <laughs> never do that nope. i'm so dependent on having like a strict like sleeping schedule so probably gonna live longer than me just yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no i'm ari... six foot five so it's highly unlikely oh, <laughs> dang. Yeah. no ari like it doesn't matter what it is like it could be like oh shoot they just dropped the ryan johnson trilogy in theaters like no announcement it's just playing in theaters right now <laughs> He would not allow me trilogy, to call him. All three the whole trilogy. He would not allow me to call him before 9 a.m. He'd be like, don't bother me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, as soon as I Man. wake up, though, I'm always on it. I'm always ready to go. But oh, for well, sure. During yeah. the sleep, it's like, no. I'm going to have to deal with it because, you know, when I get to celebration, I'll be wandering around like as if it was like 4 a.m. for me. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, with yeah. all the jet lag and stuff. So I'm going to have to deal with it at some It'll stage. It'll be interesting. But, um, <laughs> yeah man uh something i want to ask about one of the videos so the bad batch one is just so interesting to me so the rebels mm -hmm. and clone wars one's obviously fantastic but the bad batch one that just went in a direction i just did not see coming your approach with it um i just thought like yeah you'd have a, a great breakdown of you know you know the characters and all yeah. that sort of thing and you did but then you incorporated the um you know that military side and that real life sort of stuff so you know what was sort of the thinking behind that i'm interested to hear um well i so the show came to an end you know like mid-august or whatever um i was wrapping up my mass effect one video and i was thinking about the next video the plan was to go right into mass effect two which i only was able to do until you know recently mm -hmm. um but you know i was like kind of curious i put out like a discussion post on my channel like asking people what they thought of the show and it was like my most popular discussion post and i was like okay 
if I want to do a Bad Batch video, like it'll probably get views. Um, I put up the Mass Effect 1 video. And for the record, like the ultimate, like the my bottom line when I create a video is, is it a video that I am satisfied with? Mm, you know, yeah. like the the very the very act of creating that video to my fullest potential to the point where I'm like, I did everything I could have. This is the best possible thing that I could have done at this moment is its own fulfillment. That being said, um, you know, like there, you know, there, there is an unavoidable element of like how many views does something get? And the Mass Effect 1 video did not get that many views, at least not compared to any videos I had put out mm -hmm. uh, recently. And uh, it was a little discouraging, but also made me think like, okay, I can do the Mass Effect 2 video, but maybe a better time would be like later. Let me like yeah. put it on ice for a little bit, do something else in the meantime. And thankfully that strategy worked out because the Mass Effect 2 video did much better than the first video when I put it out recently. Uh, in large part due to the Star Wars exchange and all stars promoting it on Instagram, no doubt. But um... <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, I'm looking right now yeah. at, your, at your YouTube channel yeah. and I'm just like, I'm still amazed. I mean, obviously you deserve this and more, but I'm like, Oh yeah, I mean my Mass Effect video only got seventy eight thousand views. Yeah, no biggie compared to my well, like hundreds of thousands. Oh my, and one is about to hit a million. So we need to. Ari and I have, actually, have talked about doing a campaign to to so we can help get it oh. rolling at least to hit <laughs> the algorithm so it appears for yeah. more people. But like it's almost yeah. it's at nine eighty seven k. So if if you're watching, go check out that uh, Clone Wars. Go video. watch. It, go it'll watch. definitely get there though. We gotta but, get a. Sorry, can I, I know you're about to say something, Pax, but I just want to say on that philosophy that you have, it's like it's like, well, do I you know want to make this content? Yeah. It's like I have so much respect for that because you know I think it's safe to say like a lot of your subscribers are there for Star Wars content. Yeah. Um, because you know those are your videos that have really mm -hmm. blown up, but to, it's like it's a testament to you to like keep. It's like yeah, I, you know I'll keep doing some Star Wars stuff, but. I want to talk about this too. I like yeah, I respect that so much because yeah, absolutely. the the quality, like I was saying before, it, it holds up no matter what you're talking about. So yeah. And uh, yeah, you're you. going to pull more audiences in. So I, I just, sure. I respect that. That's, that's so cool. Very, Genuine. very Thank noble you. way Appreciate to go about it. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, um, so, you know, at that point I was like, okay, bad batch is on the table. Like the first season's wrapped up. It's just the first season though. Like how much is there to talk about? Yeah. Um, and then I sort of, you know, I talked about it with my friend Davey, who I, you know, I brought up before. He Shout was, out to Davey. Shout out to Davey. Live stream we love Davey. <laughs> we, Davey the coach. We love Davey. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, for, for anyone who's a, like a reminder or, or just wasn't aware, like didn't watch the Book of Boba Fett like stream thing we did, or you guys did. Um, yeah. Davey's like one of my best friends. Uh, he watched the entirety of the Clone Wars through with me in preparation for like my videos when I did those like two years oh, ago. So almost. Davey was the friend interesting yes exactly uh, and um also watch through all the rebels for me on my first time through he had already seen it but i had not um yeah. and so yeah he's 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 been a part of the star wars journey for me like the last few years but um i i was talking with him about the bad batch because we were also watching that at the time of course and yeah i was i was we got into like this interesting idea of like you know talking about i i think it was like the movie rambo um and how similar that felt to one of the episodes, I believe. Boy, I don't. I I can remember Clone Wars episodes on a dime, but not Bad Batch episodes yet. Um, <laughs> it's like the third to last episode of of the season where you first see the the proto stormtroopers for the first time. Oh, Warhead, I think it's called. Is that it? No, that's Rebels. That's Rebels. Uh, it's war. <laughs> mantle. It's all, it's, war mantle. War mantle. War mantle. Yeah, there we that's go. It. Um, yeah. And and yeah, like the opening sequence of that episode is like super similar to a sequence from First Blood where uh, John mm. Rambo is running through a forest and he's being pursued. And it got us thinking about like and, and then if you have never seen that movie, there is this incredible uh, scene at the end where, you know, John Rambo played by um, um, his name is escaping me. He's Sylvester Stallone yeah. is is like f just breaking down. And and for context, like um, John Rambo is like a Vietnam vet, and um, a lot of the movie is sort of about like the attitude of Americans towards Vietnam veterans um, in that time period. And you know, like that is like a thing going throughout the whole film. And he's breaking down. He's talking about all this stuff, and just you know, I I had watched that for the first time with him because I was curious about it. And and at that point, like 
you kind of see Hunter in John Rambo just because of the sim- the bandana, like the hair. Right. And at that point, I started like sort of thinking about Bad Batch, and I was like, you know, there is something there. Like there is something. There's some angle of that that you can apply to like this idea of like clones who've been retired and like are out of place in the galaxy and have nowhere to go and like can't really fend for themselves and are being left to fend for themselves. But also yeah. like the times are changing around them. And I don't know. I just, it was so interesting. So I, I just kind of went down the rabbit hole of, of like, uh, like veterans, the history of like treatment of veterans with Vietnam. I watched a lot of Vietnam documentaries. I watched a couple of documentaries about the Iraq war in America um or well it wasn't america but you know like the american iraq war yeah, yeah. um and um i tried to absorb as much about those topics as possible i looked up like the history of the va i looked at like criticisms mm-hmm. of the the veterans administration over like the last several years um and um i was trying to like ultimately like the justification for me was like okay like i know this is a star wars video i know people are gonna tune into it it's a bad batch video like i can say like I can have like a really just low hanging take and people are going to watch the video and tune in <laughs> what I see this as though, because this is just the first season of a show and there are probably more seasons. And I'm giving this show special treatment because of that mm. versus the other shows. <laughs> this is an opportunity for me to talk about something that might actually have an impact on the real world for once. Um, and, you know, like I love talking about media and stuff like that, but a longer term sort of, like goal I have in my life is, is to, you know, like try to leave the world in a better place in a very like optimistic, almost unrealistic way. Like try to give people like a message or something or, or Mm. to help people along or, or hopefully one day directly affect it in some way. Um, And so I'm like, okay, people are going to be showing up for the bad batch, but what if I give them something else to think about, you know? And so that's where a lot of that came from. And um, I remember I was trying to like, again, like a lot of it is about the emotional side of it. And like, I'm trying to figure out, you know, in a video that's crammed with so much of this really important historical information and military information about America, where, how do I make this emotional still? Like, how do I get people Mm -hmm. to care about this? I remember listening to, um, I believe it was uh, MGMT, Little Dark Age, the album, uh, don't know if anyone has heard of MGMT or they're pretty, they're kind of popular. Little dark age is probably one of the most popular songs. And that song is, is largely about like change during like, it, it's, it's, it's sort of about like the time, like uh, being at a time where things are changing around you and you have no control of it. And it's, it's a very emotional song. And um, that was like I, I watched an edit of it on YouTube where someone put like Clone Wars footage against it with clones fighting, and I was like, I get it, I understand mm. now. So that's that's how that video sort of unraveled and came out to what it is. Wow, yeah. isn't isn't that bad or isn't that group? I should say, isn't that group? Then they make the song for uh, or at least that Marvel pulled it for uh, or Sony whatever they pulled it for the Spider Man Homecoming trailer or, or like one of the songs, one of their songs. The- uh... I don't think so. Unless what are they called again? Tr- MGMT. MGMT. They're a newer. They're a newer group. I'm, I'm newer trying group. to think. Okay. I remember a lot of oh, Spider-Man maybe. trailers having like you know more like classic sort of 2000s rock or, or 80s rock mm. sort of things. But some I don't know. I could you could be right though. Yeah. yeah. Maybe I'm wrong. Tell me in the comments. <laughs> Yell at me. <laughs> yeah, and kind of say on the on the Bad Batch video, like uh, it was very interesting for me from you know because obviously I'm not from the United States. That perspective, because, you know, I I know some very basic information about history, but it was actually cool. I did not expect to watch a Bad Batch breakdown and then learn all this stuff about like war veterans. And, you know, it it wasn't just completely about, you know, United States stuff. It was about militaries in in general. Oh, yeah. Well, but, you know, hopefully there were like general principles in there. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. As I said earlier, a fun list of fun history lesson for all of us. (laughs) yeah sure no so yeah uh, unreal video and you know dude like i i just love your philosophy of like well you know the, i know people are going to watch this so i may as well try and make you know a positive impact so sure know, right. that's uh, yeah. very honorable but um yeah and i yeah. i'd say like probably one of my biggest like prides with that video is is how many comments i've gotten from people who are actually oh, yeah. uh, former yeah. U.S. veterans who are just like, yeah, thank you real. so much for talking about this or, or thank you for listening and trying to be 
uh, responsive about this and and just how many people were also confirming sort of like the parallels that I was that I thought, you know, if if I'm not picking up on them, at the very least, I'm projecting them and I'm doing a good job yeah, of projecting yeah. them. But people were like, yeah, no, that's totally valid. So which is wow. always a great thing to see. That's yeah. awesome. I know. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I mean, we've just talked for 50 minutes all about Parks Artor. If you have not checked out his his channel, go check it out. Before we finish up, we want to talk to Parks about about Styles because obviously this is a Styles podcast. Of course, but, yeah. Um, you know, first I just wanted to ask first of all. So, like, how involved are you like in the in the fan base? Obviously, you have you know a level of involvement involvement, but you know how involved are you? And and what like what what do you think of of the fan base? Like, do it, are you just oh, so toxic? I can't, I need to get out of it. Or, you know, how, how do you feel about it all? Um, I have to say it's been really strange. Cause like, you know, I, I meant, I was, I was mentioning earlier how like growing up, like, you know, with the clone wars, like you didn't have a fandom that resembled anything like the sort of fandom you have now with star Wars, but there was a very like secular sort of star, like clone wars community on YouTube. And, um, I played a, um, online game at the time called clone wars adventures oh. which was a a tie-in mmo for star wars the clone wars super cool like anytime there was a, a new episode they would have uh like outfits and like items yep. from that episode in the yep. game so it was cool um but you know that was like my sort of like exposure to like a star wars community growing up and it was very wholesome um you know everyone was sort of making stuff everyone was like loved the show they loved what was going on um, and like, I think it started getting like I, when, when the Disney acquisition happened and then Clone Wars was canceled, Rebels was announced. It took like this weird sour turn that I hadn't seen before. And I wasn't like, I didn't know how to and, like, you know, it, it goes without yeah. saying now, like a lot of people that you could, you could sort of glean at the time were upset about Clone Wars getting canceled and were not excited for Rebels. They were, they were, yeah. you know project like uh seeing it as like a, a step down from clone yeah. wars and um, and can i just say like sorry to, to interrupt but ahead, it's like yeah. i feel like you know that is such like a fair thing to go well, what, you're canceling my show and shoving this other absolutely my face. that is completely fair absolutely. um it, even though like i love rebels like course, so much but too. at the yeah. time i understand it but it's like this is with everything it's like it's just how you go about it if you're going on yeah. on on social media and some people just say the most ridiculous thing yes. and are just impossible to, you know, conversate with. So it's like, be, be annoyed, be frustrated, completely Absolutely. fine, but it's how you go about it. Yeah. It's so important, but yeah. Yeah. And so that was like, you know, I, I talk about my videos, of course, but you know, I kind of went away from like that side of the fandom for a bit, at least like the side that was into like animate the animated star Wars in part. Like yeah. I also didn't keep up with rebels anymore so hmm. had no idea what was going on over there but you know i was part of like the hype for force awakens last jedi um hmm. you know it was like you know we talked about earlier like watching like collider podcast at the time and um you know i i was i was invested in it i wouldn't say i participated in the fandom per se you know i'd go to see star wars yeah. movies with my friends that was about the extent of it um i'd say what really like brought me back into the fandom was like probably like uh, Clone Wars season seven, you know, because mm -hmm. Jedi Fallen or Mandalorian brought me back into Star Wars in a sense of like, oh man, I got to know every little detail about this universe again. Um, but then Clone Wars season seven was where I was like, kind of doing what I was doing as a kid, where I was like looking in the internet, what people thought like all the time. Yeah. And, and mm -hmm. it, it was such a wonderful, like, man, I didn't think I could ever have this again. You know, like when the Clone Wars is canceled now, like I can do this again. Like, and you know, the funny sentiment to me, it, f it felt like like a lot of the people that, you know, that from that secular Clone Wars community that was kind of wholesome, you know, growing up, like, you know, a lot of the community around Clone Wars season seven at the time to me felt very similarly. Like, it's like nothing ever changed, you know, like right. we're still like we love this show, and, you know, we love what it is. And, um, you know, I made my videos at the time and I try to keep up with sort of Star Wars fandom things. Um, throughout 2020 but like when my channel blew up towards the end of 2020 um and uh you know like the stars videos got a bunch of attention and then especially like when i put out the rebels video and uh, mid like mid last year 
um that's when like a bunch of star wars creators like followed me and and were like promoting my stuff and i was like what is going on like i don't know any of these people but and that's where i feel like i've kind of been since where i'm 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 there's been this star wars bubble and now i'm in it and i'm just like <laughs> like um and you know that's for better or worse um but honestly for better most of the time you know like yeah because you know i've gotten to meet a lot of really awesome people like you guys and oh, thank you. um a couple other really cool star wars creators that i'm i'm just aware of that i was not aware of before and i i understand like there is like the fandom is almost like a living thing you know like it's 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 like it is <laughs> you know and and um everyone's a part of it like it has it has ups and downs it has cycles you know and uh, it has battles, you know, it has its own fair share of Star Wars, if you will. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, like there's there's a toxic element out there. But I don't know, between like Star Wars stuff with DC stuff with Marvel stuff with just big fandoms over the last few years, like to me, it just feels symptomatic of, of a, a greater like cultural sort of problem on the Internet and not so much like Star Wars. I mean, you know, there's uh, an argument to be made about. Yeah like you know in general like star wars for a lot of people growing up sort of offers this sort of stability and it's a security blanket for a lot of things and is a for, as a necessary bit of escapism and maybe for some people like like one of the best things from their childhood and so to see that this thing that they hold on to very firmly change and not in their favor or not in a yeah, way that they agree with want, yeah can be you know, it can, it can, it can be rough. And I understand that, but you know, like as Star Wars teaches, like change is a good thing. And, and one of the most important things you can do for yourself and for others is sometimes is to let go. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I would say like, yeah, for all of us out there tweeting about Star Wars, like, I think sometimes we just need to not tweet that thing. And sometimes we just need to let go of that hot take. And other times we just <laughs> need to like, you know, just be chill, you know, be like a Jedi. Just be chill. What a quote. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mate, just, you, you do bring up a good point though with like, yeah, obviously there is like, it is a bit different because, you know, it's that long lasting thing and it's changing and evolving and that's sort of why it can be so yeah. sensitive. But it's like when you have that many people focused on one thing, like there's just always going to be like that toxic element. Like, yes. you know, I follow a lot And of possessiveness, things. you know. Yeah, like, <laughs> exactly. Like, exactly. like, you know, this is, this is what Star Wars is. No, this is what yeah. Star Wars is. Right. And ultimately, like, there is a way, I believe, where we can disagree about stuff and not, like, be mean-spirited <laughs> about fight. it. You know? There's <laughs> right. a way that yeah. we can agree. There's a way that some of us can say the Inquisitor looks fine. There's a way others of us can yeah. say, like, no, they screwed up. And we don't have to be there is no because he it. looks terrible. And that's <laughs> I agree, but if but, someone came up to me and said, yeah, get yeah, over yeah. it, I would say, Yeah, exactly. I will. It's okay. Yeah, I'm gonna exactly. love the show, I'll get used to it. I think they yeah. could have done better. That's about yeah, it. Yeah, sure. now, Parks, on your nostalgic trip with Clone Wars, you know, revisiting yes. uh, the the you said you was like the wholesome more part of the community or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, you know. You you get into Bad Batch and being like, wow, we're back into the thick of it. It feels back yeah. like we're in like 2013, 2012, um, back when Clone Wars, you thought it was like, man, season five, it's it, it's it can't get better than this. Right. And then you you watch Bad Batch and you're like, OK, wow. I mean, it's, you know, I you know, that arc, you know, people had reactions and stuff like that. But what was really selling probably um, the the Star Wars like community sometimes what it could be was with the Martez sisters arc. So how did you go from, yeah, wow, I'm back, you know, Clone Wars is back. I feel like I'm a kid again. All I need is to grab my laptop, um, log in my hours for the day on, on Clone Wars Adventures. And now it's just being like, it just feels again, like we're writing off the Clone Wars hype. And now we're, you know, Clone Wars is being canceled. And now everyone's just yelling at each other. And that's, like, I don't know, because it kind of like, when I was doing watching the, the Martez sisters yeah. arc and, getting that feedback online after i was just like oh my head hurts it just felt as you said we were oh, we yeah. were back in that era so how, how, how did you feel with that were you discouraged to get back in the community or whatnot honestly like there was a part maybe maybe i wasn't seeing the spaces that you were seeing but there was a part of that that felt wholesome too because like i remember season five like yeah that's sh that season's great it's awesome i love every part of it sunny day in the void banger i'll say it let's um, go 
It is George Lucas's favorite. It <laughs> is, Wars, yeah, so, and that's so. the only reason I like it. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> no, but um, y- no, like I remember, I I very clearly remember people complaining s- through so much of that season. Like, yeah, towards the end of the Andron arc, people were like, oh, "This is getting boring," and, you know. With with the uh, the young Jedi arc, and I was on the side of this at the time. They were like, "Man, like." this show is supposed to be dark. What's going on? And like, huh. at that point, it's like, I'm, I'm 12 years old. Like, you know, pin, just get a hold of yourself parks. Um, <laughs> but you know, like get a hold of you yourself. Know, other people thought that. And then when it got to the droid arc, people were like, this is the, these are the worst, this is the worst star Wars has ever been. That was like, a thing. um, and like at the time I, I was like, that arc is so confusing to think about. Cause like the first two episodes are pretty like, what am I watching? And then you get to the Gregor stuff, which is awesome, but also like there's more of this. And then you get to the final episode, which is just like, I don't know, that last episode is insane. Like just just there's so much stuff that happens. It's a lucid dream. And then by the end of it, I'm like, did I really enjoy all of this? I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah. yeah, people complained through all of that. And and you know, honestly, Clone Season Seven, like the Martez sisters, like, you know, not my favorite episodes in the world, but honestly. I wouldn't have it any other way. Like that's, that's just Clone Wars for me. Like it's, Mm -hmm. it has those ups and downs and it's always told with like a certain intent. You know, I I think like even those episodes, like, you know, I could disagree with some of the intent. I think maybe like some of the things they're trying to communicate about some of the sisters sort of characters in certain parts are not the greatest, but um, you know, like even when people were being negative or downbeat on, and even my, my close friends were like, I was enjoying those episodes easily the most out of any of my friends there were things about it that i was like no nah, yeah like i get it like this is just how it is yeah. you know like we we you know we we get to fight about it you know and hey the 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 constellation is you know once we get to old friends not forgotten like we're all back on the same Dang. page yeah exactly right right so yeah. and rest like, assured it's, it's like, like a- you know we you know we didn't all love book of boba fett's you know some people had more mileage with it than others but you know, Obi Wan Kenobi's coming out in a few weeks. Yeah, so we'll exactly. Be back in it, you know. Yeah, so. it, it comes and goes. It comes and goes. Yeah, exactly. It's, yeah. it's, an, it's a never ending cycle. It seems at this sure. point. But yeah, yeah, and like you know, as we were talking about before, like, like I, I was, I was saying, like, you got that many people in one thing. Like, it's just yes. going to happen where there's there's bad parts and for sure. Know, like, and the same uh, thing was with the Bad Batch. Like, you know, Bad yeah, Batch had yeah, lots yeah. of bits where it was like. <laughs> You know, like, oh my God, I don't care about this. And and there were moments there were there, you know, there was one week where I like I held off on watching the episode because just I got so much secondhand complaining online where I was like, Okay, I'm not in a rush to watch it. I I'm I'm kind of dreading <laughs> yeah. to have a take at all. But you know, like by the end, yeah. everyone was sort of like, Oh my god, that like crosshair, bro. You know, so Yeah, right, yeah. right, right. For real. Yeah. And like it, it reminds me so much of like like I follow a lot of sport and when you go onto like their fandom, like man, sport is crazy. Oh, like, it's it's even God. worse. When you yes, go into the bad parts sure. of those those areas of the internet, oh my God, it can get real bad. It's, like it's really bad. Yeah, it, yeah, it, it, yeah. So, yeah. like people think it's that bad with Star Wars, and then you know I'm I'm watching a bunch of like you know sports uh, coverage online, and I'm like, oh man, okay, okay. It, Star it Wars gets, is not, it gets not that really bad. hairy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so trust me, go to Star Wars Celebration. And it's it's yeah. just the whole side of the fandom that just all the good sides of the fandom that um yeah, or just the good side of the fandom because sure. it's like it's just as, as you were saying parks earlier it's just the culture of of the internet sometimes so, you know yeah uh, some yeah. people just don't hold back from their hot takes and arguments yeah. and stuff like that but you go to Star Wars Celebration it's a whole other energy so uh sure. yeah if you're yeah. ever uh sad about the state of Star Wars fandom just go to Celebration and yeah. it cures everything and as they say yeah. about winning. Here's everything. So, uh, yeah, go to Star Wars Celebration. Go everything. I, and I will say, like, just just to, to for the record, like, there are a good bit of very intolerant ideas and and people in the Star Wars yeah. fandom. And yeah. I, yeah, as as I as it as intolerant suggests, we have no reason to tolerate them. And the, you know, like, there there's no place for. Uh, any sort of hateful message they spew or any hateful yeah. platform they assume. And that is an important thing to strike down, an important thing to Definitely. to denounce. Um, but outside of that, like from the 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 like enthused, relaxed agreement to 
the more like, you know, like I disagree and your opinions on Star Wars suck. Like that's, you know, all of it is valid. Yeah. So we could sure. just all do a better job of, of talking about it. But yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so before we finish up, I want to do some rapid fire questions. I got eight questions for you. Mm-hmm. And I just want to hear straight, straight bang answers. I'll do my best. Turn yeah. them. And then after that, I got I got one final. I've never been good at stuff. keeping things short. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, you never know. Let's see. Yeah. All right. So, you ready for this? You ready to go? Sure. This is going to be like a quiz show. I'm excited for this. Okay. <laughs> All right. I can hear the timer in my head. Yeah, I'll start it now. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> All right. Question one What is your favorite Star Wars movie? The Empire Strikes Back. What is your favorite Star Wars character? Uh, Ahsoka Tano. Who is your favorite D-list character? D-list character? Um, so, no talking, no speaking role. Oh, God. <laughs> um, one word bro, answer. I really got to think about that. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to say, like, oh, boy. Favorite? God, this is so hard. Um, <laughs> I stumped him. I stumped him. Me- Meeber Gascon. Meeber, do you, he's a D list. Yeah. If say. he's a D like, list, absolutely. I love. Right. I tweet about him like once a year. Like he's my favorite. Let's go. <laughs> all right, sure. All right. What was the first Star Wars game you played? First Star Wars game I played. This was I a guess, family feud. I guess it was Lego Star Wars The Complete Saga on the Let's DS. Go. Let's go. On DS. On DS. Yeah. The wow. first one I played on console was the original Star Wars Battlefront on PS2. Oh, wow. Yeah. What is your favorite Star Wars game of all time? Favorite Star Wars game of all time? Uh, it prob- it has got to be Knights of the Republic. Yeah. I think I know the answer to this one, but what's your favorite Star Wars TV show? <laughs> Uh, you know, I'm pretty partial to, um, Star Resistance, uh, Forces of Destiny. Um, <laughs> I think they did something really special there. No, it's the Clone Wars. It's the Clone yeah, Wars. Let's go. Star Wars, what? the Clone Wars, directed by David, Dave Filoni. David Filoni. Dave Filoni. David, David, David Filoni. Filoni. <laughs> um, what is your second favorite? Oh, actually, is Star Wars your favorite franchise? Yeah, let's oh, say it because- is. Every Let's one I it. ask, I just assume it is. But it, it, yeah, what's your second favorite franchise? My second favorite franchise. Boy, I mean, I guess in fairness, it probably has to be Marvel. But like, I, I, I'm I'm a bigger Spider-Man fan than I'm a big Marvel fan. So like, I'd say Spider-Man or I'd say uh, The Witcher. Fair the Witcher. games, the show, the books. I love Witcher. Um, What is the favorite your favorite video that you've made my favorite video that i've made um i was thinking about this the other day actually i was like oh that's the one here hang on let me go to my youtube channel let me look at this really (laughs) quickly (laughs) gotta see them all lined up to be like oh yeah that's it um if you asked me a month ago it probably would have been the cyberpunk one but uh honestly it's probably the rebels one that's probably my favorite one now I reckon that's my favorite one that, you've made as that's well. That's beautiful. Um, and the final, final rapid fire. What is your wildest Star Wars take in one sentence? <laughs> my wildest Star Wars take, or, or in like one controversial, sense. or you know. Oh boy! It is. Oh god! Um... He's gonna say the Inquisitor looks bad and so controversial on Twitter. The, Inqu- <laughs> the Inquisitor looks good. No, I'm just. Kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rogue One is not my favorite thing in the world. I'll say that. Uh, Ooh, interesting. Okay. All right. To be fair, though, I have not watched it since like 2017. Oh, wow. So I need to. That and so I've not with seen that. Yeah. See, there we go. <laughs> I want to see a video on um, Rogue One. Yeah. I, I think I will eventually. I have to, I have yeah. to rewatch it. I've rewatched well, you, the shows more times than I've watched Rogue One. Yeah, you yeah, posted but... a thing the other day being like, what should I cover? And I was like, I was thinking I was sitting there. Like, oh, I got to give some input. And I was going to say like solo Rogue One, but I, I, did you see my comment? I did. I did see it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was about to say, he's asking all his like followers and you're over here that has, that has like a direct connection to his DM. And you're like, <laughs> hmm, he's well, you know, let me tell him. Engage, if you want to engage with him, help, help him out. Exactly. Yeah, I appreciate right. playing along. It's so yeah, great. For sure. That's good. Yeah. Um, um, you know what? Before, sorry, I just want to touch on yeah. this real quick. I run a, a Star Wars book club on Discord. 
mm-hmm. and the other day um you know i teased out that we were going to be talking to you and stuff and everybody was like artur like i love his rebels video because right now we're doing um we're covering the 2017 thrawn novel yeah. and so then we got on a whole ramble about you and how great you are i'm like guys like seriously parks is such a nice guy oh, you guys best. so everyone everyone was talking uh highly about you and and so much about your rebels video and how like you know, this is one negative Rebels video out there that like people watch. Yeah, I'm not going to watch Rebels, but yours seems to the be the one that not- should not be named. Yeah, yeah exactly. But yours seems that. to not that you set out to do this, but it just seems like you're like a counterbalance of it. You're just like, trying that to was, spread it. You broke I don't want to say that false. was the goal, but it was something where I was like, if yeah. I pull this off, this yeah. will be a counterbalance. You did, exactly. You did. Um, yeah. So I'm glad it's out there. And one day, one day more views than it we'll see one day all right <laughs> not that views matter like i said not that views yeah, matter yeah, yeah. but but it would be nice <laughs> it would be a mark of like the renaissance yeah. begins today and and yeah. we we won you know <laughs> we won. <laughs> we won. What you said what you said earlier mike about victory or winning makes something oh, better yeah, 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 yeah winning cures everything exactly yeah. there we go gotcha. yeah um and so <laughs> just just to finish off one final question what what is your thoughts on the future of the franchise? How are you feeling going forward? We've got all these series coming. The movies are just an absolute mess. <laughs> How are you feeling all, about it all? Um, excited but scared just because like, yeah. um, you know, I, a sort of common sort of discussion point or sentiment that got thrown around a lot like, uh during the sequel trilogy era where you had you know episode seven one year rogue one the following year last Jedi, one year solo a few months later is star wars fatigue and Mm. this idea Mm. of like star wars is special when it goes away for a while and then like when it comes back it's a huge thing now you know we don't know star wars fatigue the way the casual viewer does you know because like we're consuming star wars all the time yeah though yeah it's like even if it goes away we're still we're still watching it yeah like. you're still look you're still going after it yeah, yeah and yeah. um but it's still in spite of that there is like a different energy when a movie is coming out when a show is coming out the show is definitely like on a much lower wavelength excuse me than the movies the movies are far more events than like the shows are but um yeah. still like more and more as it seems like the shows are becoming like that sort of future sort of pathway for star wars to me it feels like that's where a lot of the energy is going to be shifting and and i wonder if in that case like will will star wars fatigue occur and um you know like ultimately i don't think star wars fatigue will occur if and the whole reason that even matters for the record is like you know Star Wars is, is a thing that is awesome for a lot of reasons. There's a lot of storytelling depth you can surmise from it. There's a lot of great characters. There's so many great stories. It's such a great storytelling space for so many people. And it's a great way to like meet and connect with other people, as you know, I've done with you guys here. Mm. Um, and but you know, ultimately as well, like if if it's none of those things, it is like this pure form of escapism for like the casual audience member. And that is a very important thing to preserve. Um and especially for children, you know, who are able to watch this and, you know, have like this generational experience with Star Wars that we've all been like privileged to have. Um, and so that's important to preserve and it can be preserved through TV. But the you you it's it's sort of like the gambler's fallacy of the more you put out, the more you sort of run that risk and the more you try to like, you know, the more sort of Star Wars content you produce for television you know, especially with that live action flair with the same over time with maybe even more budget than the films with more content than the films, maybe with even more significance. I mean, we saw Luke Skywalker and Ahsoka Tano in Book of Boba Fett. That seems pretty important. And boo. you can foresee. Just sorry. I said boo. Oh, yes. No. Mike, Mike infamous. Has a habit of doing that. Infamous uh, Star Wars hater, Mike. <laughs> no Star but, Wars. Um, yeah. But no, so, you know, like, it seems like that's where they're going to be putting, you know, more stuff over time. And that's exciting because ultimately I prefer the TV format of Star Wars to the film format. Um, biased because I grew up with Clone Wars, but also yeah. largely because Star Wars is heavily inspired by, like, uh, a lot of the, like, Old Republic serials of, like, the 30s, 40s, 50s that Lucas mm-hmm. grew up on. 
and like Flash Gordon, which was a serial. And so Star Wars gets its roots from television. It, it translates naturally to television now. Um, but it's important to preserve that. And, and the, the more you put out, like the more you run that risk of like maybe like demeaning it or burning it out. But at the same time, you are allowing more creators to come in and tell new stories. And um, even outside of that, like there's awesome stuff happening in like the higher public. You know, I'm starting to uh, catch back up on Rising Storm again. Um, yes, let's go. Oh, yeah. yes. We so love Rising Storm. Slowly getting there. Um, and, you know, like I love collecting stuff and I, you know, I love being able to talk about all these things. And if nothing else, all these projects coming out, like, you know, I'm just just guarantees that I get views for the next few years. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, that's uh, that's sorry. I don't, I don't, again, I love everyone here and I, you know, I don't do it for the views though. The views are a part of it, but um, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's an evolving thing and Star Wars is going to have push pulls and I, I hope all the shows are good. Um, and I really like a lot of the storytellers are behind them. And I like the initiative to explore parts outside of like the films but also, like, you know, there are people for whom the films are are like a sacred part of the experience. And so mm. I don't I don't want Star Wars to be like a like on every front in the same way Marvel is or DC is. I want it to feel special. And right now it still feels special. And I don't have the answer to how that can keep going. If it can keep going with all the shows, I just hope that it does. And I hope that it still manages to be a thing where, you know, a seven year old can turn on Disney Plus just as I turned on Spike when I was seven years old and can go, <laughs> you know, who is the guy with the green helmet on TV? And they go, that's Django Fett or something, you know, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> right, right. And, and continue yeah. the legacy, you know? That's um, it. So, yeah, I think that about sums it up. Awesome. Beautiful. Well, Pox, it's been an absolute blast as always. We absolutely love having you on. <laughs> Man, you gave some awesome answers, awesome insight into your channel, what you like as a Star Wars fan. Yeah. So, so cool to hear. Um, I'm sure, you know, we'll, we'll have you on the game soon. Hopefully, maybe something for Obi-Wan or something like that. Parks, but, I would um, love to do that. Just Parks, yeah. is, Parks is no longer a special guest. He's a correspondent for us. Yeah. So. <laughs> but still special. Hang on. So special. Let's call him Parks. Uh, no. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. No, yeah, we'll, we'll call you up and yeah, yeah, we'll definitely have you on for Obi-Wan. Come on. That'd be fine. If, if yeah. we if we sat you here talking about the mods in episode three of Book of Boba Fett, go listen to that. By the way, um, I, and in fact, I would love if you were able to pay for my celebration ticket so we could do a, an episode together. But that's not happening because well, you never know. <laughs> never, you never know. know. No, don't. Um, yeah. I, I don't have the arrangements to do that. Right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, well, we're Parks, where can by. people find you on uh, social media? And you know, obviously, check out Arthur on YouTube. But yeah. Yeah, of course. Our tour on YouTube. I do, you know, uh, video essays, doc documentary style videos on all kinds of movies, video games, shows, of course, Star Wars, but we touch on many other types of videos I've done today, like Mass Effect, um, Cyberpunk. Um, and that will only continue. There'll be many more videos this year. In fact, I'm working on uh, two different ones that are probably going to release around the same time right now. Knock on wood. Uh, you can also follow me on Twitter at Parks Harmon. Um, I tweet on the daily. Uh, yeah, I end up liking he a lot of He also likes a lot, a lot of tweets that come yeah, up in my yeah, feed. So make sure you interact yeah. with them and you'll see. You'll see it's content. Is liking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's content. Um, you can also follow me on Instagram. I, I don't really post anything ever, but, you know, well, that might change eventually. Hey, that's how um, we got in touch, though, on Instagram. So. That's true, yeah. So if you ever need yeah. to get in touch with me, Instagram's a good place because I'm not really doing anything else on there. So, uh, yeah. yeah, Instagram, Parks Harmon as well. Um, and then follow me on Twitch, uh, twitch.tv forward slash Sator um again like take ar out of my name put sai boom you found my channel hmm. um i don't stream very often at the moment i was streaming a little bit of the older public expansion when that came out like a month or two ago um i know lego star wars is coming out oh yeah um i <laughs> don't have plans to stream it but there's a good chance i probably will stream some of it when i'm playing it so follow me on there and you can interact with me further while i'm playing through lego star wars as i'm sure my canary will as well yeah, yeah for if, sure. if you're not and, if you're not gonna if you're not gonna do it we'll do it so yeah no so, i was about to say because this episode will come out before lego styles i think only a day or two so we are streaming the night of april 4th time to be confirmed make sure you're following all the socials for that um yeah i'll be playing michael be there 
Uh, we'll be chatting, you know, make sure you get in the chat and talk to us. We're, we're keen to, to do it. We, we haven't live streamed since that one with Park. So should be a load of fun. But um, yeah, that pretty much wraps up the episode. Once again, thank you so much to Parks for coming on. Um, thank you Mike, so much for having where me. Can the good... Yeah, no, for sure, for sure. Um, where can the good people uh, find you on the socials? You, you guys can find me all underscore Star Wars on Twitter and Instagram. And of course, um, <clears throat> you can check out our Instagram. Make sure to follow it because we're trying to post daily or at least... Ari and I don't run it. We actually have someone running it for us right now. But uh, make sure you follow it at the SW Exchange and uh, check check that out. It's it's a lot of fun. Come hang with us and talk talking with you guys is a passion of ours. So if you comment on the YouTube and if you comment on Instagram, we'll reply because uh, we love yeah. y'all. So keep nice be part of the conversation. Fun. Subscribe whether you're listening to Spotify and all that. Do all that. Do it. Yeah, yep. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, give us those ratings. We love it. Subscribe, like, do it all. You can follow me, Star Wars underscore exchange on Instagram. Get on it. Um, but yeah, thanks everyone for listening. May the force be with you and have a good day. See you Adios. Very well.